Today we're focusing on George William Russell, the Williams driver. He's been with the team for 18 months or so now, and in eight seconds time, I'll tell you a whole lot more. George Russell was born on February 15, 1998. He uh, lives in Kings Lynn in Norfolk. He went to school in Wisbeck Grammar. His parents are Stephen and Alison, and I met Stephen and Alison in Abu Dhabi. Last year it was uh, after the season at post-season testing. His dad was a mechanic when George was in carts, apparently a bit of a whiz mechanically. Initially, when I met the pair, I thought they were Nicholas Latifi's parents because I saw mum Alison give Nicholas a hug before Nicholas went out to do his first testing session. I went up afterwards and said, oh, you must be Nicholas's parents. Nope. We're George's parents. They have three children, so George is the youngest of the three. Here's Sister Cara, she's the operations manager at the W Series, an all-female single-seater racing championship that kicked off in 2019. He has a brother, older brother Benji, who used to race carts, and uh, through George's earlier career, Benji provided plenty of valuable advice. On the girlfriend front, he's linked with Seychelles de Vries, who is the sister of F2 racer Nick de Vries, seen here. George is pretty tall. He's 185 centimetres, about six foot one. And fitting into an F1 car is no mean feat, but he's not the tallest driver. There are two drivers taller than George, Esteban Ocon and Alex Albon. They're a centimetre taller than George, to be exact. He is great with fans, happy to do autographs, happy to pose for selfies, and I think uh, because it's new to him, he's only been in the sport uh, 18 months in, in the highest level, he's lapping it up. I tend to think that once a driver's been in it for decades, or certainly a number of years, they perhaps become a little bit jaded to all that uh, fan involvement. At the track, I often spot him with his trainer, Alesh Casanovas, and interestingly enough, he spent lockdown with George at the Russells family home, uh, training him every single day because he felt it was a little bit safer to stay in UK than go back to Barcelona. The other person I see him within the paddock is James Irwin, his engineer. In Melbourne, they were situated out on the patio of the hospitality suite, running through a lot of their planning for the race that never eventuated. James trained Lance Stroll in 2017 and 18, and then when Lance left and uh, George came in, he picked up with George. So what's he like? George, I mean, not James, I don't know much about James. George is genuine, he's chatty, happy to smile, uh, particularly for my lens, which I like. Uh, and like most of the young drivers, he's very mature around the media. He's really comfortable with them. And I guess that comes with having years of being around the media and sponsors in, um, in the paddock. Uh, by the way, too, you can actually grab the George Russell photo book by heading to kimillman.com. It's full of my best pictures of George, taken over the last couple of years. It'll be sent to you almost anywhere in the world. He wears Alpine Stars boots, gloves, race suits. He's an IWC watch man. I often see him in a big pilot's watch or this particular model here. He doesn't have a sunglasses sponsor. Instead, he wears whatever he wants. I've caught him in Gucci and also here in Polo. Did you know he's a Wolverhampton Wanderers fan? His dad has a season membership. Uh, George comes to a couple of games, I understand, and certainly Wolves were happy to have him on this particular day. And he's on their website, posing with his father. How does he relax, I hear you cry? He likes golf, doesn't play a lot of it, but I think long term, perhaps when his F1 career is finished, he may well get into golf. He likes the relaxation side of it. Very active on social media. He has, uh, what, three quarters of a million Instagram followers. Has an impressive website, which was designed by Miles Murphy. Now, Miles is from MDM, and I did a, a video on Miles uh, probably a month or so ago. You can find it on my YouTube channel. And he's been working with Miles since 2013. Why is he number 63, I hear you cry? Yes, that's the number on his helmet, it's the number on his car. He was the first F1 driver to use that number. And in fact, I'm not sure that any other F1 driver has used a number in the 60s. So why did George pick 63? Well, according to him, when he looks at the six, he sees the G. When he looks at the three, he sees the R, of course. Now, when I first looked at this image, I became aware of the Maisie K logo. Now, I thought that was a brand, a company. And while researching for this video, I discovered that indeed Maisie Kay is a UK singer. I asked Maisie why her name is on George's helmet, to which she responded, I've always been a fan of F1 racing, 
And when I had the opportunity to collaborate with such a talented driver like George, I was so excited. I knew sponsoring him would be a great choice. So George is promoting Maisie to his F1 fans, and at some point, Maisie will feature George in one of her music videos, promoting him to her fans. So it's a rather unique example of cross-marketing. Let's go back to George's early days of racing. He started karting in 2006, aged eight. In 2010, he won two separate championships and graduated to the KF3 class in 2011, winning another two championships, one of which saw him defeat more experienced opposition, including the likes of Lance Stroll, Max Verstappen, and Esteban Ocon. He successfully defended that title in 2012. In 2014, he finished fourth in the Formula Renault 2.0 Alps Championship and competed in the BRDC Formula 4 Championship, and he clinched that title by just three points. Later that year, he became the youngest ever winner of the prestigious McLaren Autosport BRDC Award, beating a host of talented drivers, including one of his closest friends, Alexander Albon. And get this, he picked up 100,000 pounds cash, along with an F1 test with McLaren. In 2015, he finished sixth in Formula 3 and third the following year. That year, 2016, he'd all but signed with BMW to race in the German DTM series for 2017, but he got a call while he was laying in the bath from the development manager at Mercedes, who said he'd just started working with the team and George was the first guy he wanted to sign. And that's where it started, in the bath back in 2016. George repaid Mercedes Trust winning the GP3 title in 2017 and the F2 title in 2018. And just quickly, thank you to Canity.com, the best online staff training platform around. Hundreds of short, sharp videos designed to keep your staff on their toes. And you can even trial Canity.com for free right now. Back to George Russell. In 2018, I shot him out of the car in nice light for the first time at the French GP. I love this photo. And we don't often see the F2 drivers in the main paddock because they have a different paddock at all the races. I also shot him in Singapore in his capacity as Mercedes reserve driver. So uh, a lot of you would say, what does a reserve driver do? Because most of the time they don't sit in the car, obviously. Uh, yes, they're there at the track in case something happens to the main drivers, but often it'll be PR, it'll be um, in the background working with the team. And George has always lapped up that opportunity. And, and of course, he gets to work very closely with the likes of a six-time world champion, Lewis Hamilton. 2019, he joined Williams after signing a multi-year deal. And when he found out he got that deal, he rang his parents, and I do like this, he said his mother swore and his father was left on the brink of tears when he told them. His teammate for 2019 was Polish racer Robert Kubica. Pair got on well, but the team had a horrid year, didn't they? And as a result, George ended up last of the 20 starters with zero points. 2020 is looking like a better year for him. He's partnered with Canadian Nicholas Latifi. And already in uh, the first five races, he's done pretty well in qualifying, certainly better than he did last year. Interestingly, he has no manager. Mercedes-Benz manages him, like Red Bull did with Daniel Ricciardo in the early years. Daniel now has a management company, and perhaps George will one day end up going that way. What sort of money would a driver like George be on? Well, it depends what you read on the internet. Anywhere from US $330,000 up to say a million dollars. And indeed, he is the first Briton to drive for Williams since 2009 world champion Jensen Button began his career there at the turn of the century. I often think that if George wasn't a Formula One racer, he'd be a model. He's tall, he has great features, He's pretty natural in front of the camera, and in the driver portrait shoot at the start of this season, he shone when he was in front of 40 or so of us photographers in Melbourne. He started off very clean shaven, and now of course he has the standard F1 driver stubble that most of them have. Who's his best friend in the paddock? Alexander Albon, without a doubt. They've been friends for over 15 years, and I so often see the pair walking and chatting in the paddock when they go into the FIA garage before they do the driver's parade, They'll come out on the red carpet and either head to the flatbed truck or a vintage car, and the pair will often be talking there. So pretty good mates, get along well, about the same height. That is George William Russell. Hopefully you've learnt a thing or two. If you liked the video, I'm gonna invite you to like the video by press on the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so. And that little bell button, if you press that, you'll get notified every time 
I post a video. You'll find my F1 photo books, my blogs and podcasts, and even one-to-one Skype chat invitations at kimillman.com. All of my images are at prostarpics.com. And for daily pics and F1 stories, follow me on Instagram at Kim Illman. Thank you for watching and stay passionate. Two, three, four, five, and that started. Thank you.